Welcome to part two of my student engagement professional development. So now I want you to turn and talk to someone that's either um, on your team or sitting next to you and I want you to think about what are some of the best comments that you've heard from your students and what would you like to hear from your students regarding your class and what engagement would look like. And what, motivi what motivates and inspires your students? Robert Marzano has done a lot of research about student engagement. In his book, Motivating and Inspiring Students, um, he explains that students need to have movement. And Eric Jensen has a book called Teaching with the Brain in Mind. And he says that, amazingly, the part of the brain that processes movement is the same part of the brain that processes learning. And if you look on the right, we have from Marzano Research a triangle of needs. And the first thing that students need, that they need met, is their physiological needs. Um, then their safety needs and their sense of belonging. Um, it's really important that for students that maybe feel that they don't belong in the classroom, that we establish a check and connect. Um, you can usually do this through st staff surveys and students can be identified that might need an extra intervention and usually about for 10 days we'll assign students to teachers and just for two minutes a day a teacher will connect with that student and um, make a personal connection to build a relationship and usually on that 11th day after we've tapered off that little two minute meet and greet the student goes to look for that person um, so little things like that can make a huge impact on a student's self-esteem and helping them to feel connected at school um, the esteem needs go with engagement and attention and it's a product of one's thinking. It gives students strategies to feel empowered. Um, Self-actualization and connecting to greater something greater than yourself is where students get inspired and motivated in their learning. And this is that growth mindset that we want our students to have. Um, individuals will work tirelessly to reach their goals and meet um, their talents. So think of a time that you set a personal goal and you were able to meet that goal. We're going to do AB partners and I'd like you to also discuss um, partner A. You're going to talk about um, when you set your goal and you reached it and partner B you're going to talk about how you felt when you reached a goal. So the next thing um, that I'd like to share with you is getting students up and moving. Energizers such as Four Corners can get um, blood pressure raised, um, endorphin levels in students' brains, helps with the um, not being drowsy, and it reduces restlessness among um, ANSI learners. So one of my good friends that I met through Discovery Education, Rodney Krauss, um, likes to use engagement strategies in math. So we're going to take a look at a student who was solving this math problem, and she strongly agreed with her answer and is ready to explain. So let's take a minute to watch this. Okay, so you can see that student was very confident in her thinking and she found purpose in her learning. Students that find purpose in their learning are, um, when they find purpose, purpose in their learning at school, are 17 times more likely to be academically motivated to learn. So thinking about growth mindset, Carol Dweck 
has found that students who believe that their intelligence is a fixed quality are more likely to avoid a challenging task, while students who believe intelligence can be developed with effort tend to be more successful. So growth mindset is, achieve, is essential to achieving our goals. So you could start out your school year by having students engage in personal projects. They could set SMART goals to help students achieve their project. Um, and if you're thinking, you know, when can I have students work on something on their own, um, you might be thinking, like, about the day before spring break, or if there is some extra time during the day, you could do um, a TED Ed Club or a Genius Hour, and this can help to facilitate that growth mindset. Um, and take a minute and talk to your partner about how is a growth mindset being communicated to your students. Um, students at the top level of that pyramid that we were looking at are motivated, engaged, attentive, and inspired to learn. Schlechte is another person that we look at to gauge levels of students um, and how they are learning. Um, sometimes when we walk through class, classrooms, we'll look to see where our students are at. Are they just complying and paying attention, but not really engaged in that learning? We want to think about their commitment and how focused they are to what the task at hand. So if you walked into a classroom, what would students be doing that would make you think that they are engaged in learning? Take a minute and jot down a couple of notes to yourself. Robert Marzano um, and Eric Jensen, like I told you before, have done a lot of research about engagement with students. And um, they also suggest through their research using mindfulness. Um, the, over the summer, I went to a really great training about mindfulness and taking time to just, you know, really focus on yourself and know that you can reach goals. There's some apps that can help students with mindfulness that are really great to do when you're transitioning from PE to a classroom. Um, and I'll give you those apps. They are Do As One, Mindfulness and Meditation for Kids, it's called Stop, Breathe, and Think, Meditation for Kids Headspace, Calm, and the Insight Timer is another app that can help your students with transitions. So how do we motivate and inspire students? We're going to do this today through academic goal setting, growth mindset cultivation, helping students to find activities that enrich them, personal projects, and altruistic projects. So the first thing we're going to talk about today that you all have access to is Discovery Education. And they have a resource called Spotlight on Strategies. And these are excellent ways to get to engage your students in learning. Um, in front of you, I have 40 different ways that you can engage your students. This is a clickable link. Um, some of my favorites that I like to do with students are paper chat, four corners, snowball fight, and jigsaw. So the spotlights on str strategies are usually strategies that are um, shared out by teachers and they give examples and videos of how to do it in your classroom. There are some for assessment, citing evidence, point of view, and they're all tied to standards. So the first one that I'd like to show you is um, the QR code hunt. Discovery Education presents the Spotlight on Strategies video prep series. Presented by the Den Community. Hi, I'm Brandon Wislocki and I'm from Irvine, California, here to show you how to use a strategy called QR Code Graffiti Walk. Engage students by getting them up and moving. The QR Code Graffiti Walk combines comprehension questions, digital media, QR codes, and physical activity to boost student interest and engagement and improve comprehension and retention of material. As they travel from one QR code to another, students are asked to share ideas and respond to questions both verbally and in written form. This collaborative conversation boosts comprehension and helps students learn how to work together to summarize their ideas into one response on the poster paper. To use this strategy, you will need QR codes containing thought-provoking questions, QR codes that point to discovery, education, media assets, poster paper, and markers. This strategy
session should take 20 to 30 minutes. Prepare to use the QR scavenger hunt strategy by locating discovery education media resources that align with the content standards you'll be addressing. Review the media and develop thought-provoking questions to pose to your students. You'll also want to create and print QR codes for the media assets and questions you develop. Attach the QR codes to poster paper and display them around the classroom. Here's a great hint. Always create at least one more poster than the number of student groups you'll have. This means there will always be a QR station open for students to rotate to. Once you've prepared your QR code posters, you're ready to use this strategy. Begin by arranging students in groups, giving each group a different color of marker and starting each group at a different QR code. Ask groups to scan their codes, review the media and our questions, discuss, and then respond by writing their answers and insights on the poster. Have groups circulate around the room, either at designated times or at their own pace. At each stop, they'll scan the QR code, review the media and our questions, discuss, and respond. As they are writing on posters, encourage them to respond not only to the questions found in the QR codes, but also to one another. To finish up, pull students back into the whole group setting and facilitate a discussion to debrief the activity. The QR code graffiti walk adds movement and mystery to the simple task of answering comprehension questions. Thought-provoking questions and engaging digital media spark meaningful group dialogue. And, because each group can see and add to the responses of the other groups, student comprehension is deepened. Giving groups different colors of markers allows you to keep track of comments made on the posters, which increases accountability for what is shared. Instead of generating QR codes for the digital media, consider having students view or read a resource as a whole group. QR codes can then be used to provide questions to spark further dialogue, debate, or to extend concepts and ideas. So now we're going to try the Spotlight on Strategy Graffiti Walk.